This is my custom built DIY Apple 5K display that can be used at 5K 60 frames a second over USB-C, 4K 60 frames a second HDR over HDMI. It uses the original on and off power button, the original power plug has a custom made I.O. panel and it looks and performs almost exactly like an iMac 5K, all for a total of around £600. And in this video, I'll show you how you can build your own. So here's the problem. I love Apple displays. From the iPhone to the iPad to the MacBook and iMac lineup, their displays have always been a massive part of why people choose Apple. They look great and they just work straight out the box, but they're not perfect. What if you want an Apple 4K external display that can be used with any device? As of right now, it doesn't exist. Until now. Here's what you need, an Apple 5K replacement display, a 5K driver board, an iMac 27 inch A14 19 case, a dual display port Thunderbolt 3 5K USB-C adapter, some double sided adhesive strips, some electrical tape, an extra display port cable. You might also need two HDMI right angle extension cable adapters, two DisplayPort right angle cable extension cable adapters, a male 3.5mm to female 3.5mm audio cable, some form of speaker, a soldering iron and solder, some scissors, wire cutters or wire trimmers, a screwdriver and allen key, a hacksaw and metal file, some velcro, a hot glue gun and glue, two power cables, a computer with Thunderbolt 3 USB-C and a multimeter. Step one, start by removing the internals from the iMac case. Don't remove the power button, the power socket or the cables attached to either. Step two, cut out your new IO ports. I use the hacksaw to simply saw out the center of two ports to make one bigger port and hot glue the female ends of the extension cables in place. Plug another cable in the other end before applying the glue to make sure you know that it will line up later. I installed two HDMI ports, two display ports and a 3.5mm audio output. Step 3. Mount the driver board anywhere inside the case in reach of your extension cables and make sure it's also in reach of the backlight cable and data cable port on the display. We will be connecting them later. I decided the top right was a good fit for mine and I used Velcro to mount it. Try and buy the right sized extension cables so that you don't have tons of extra cable like me. Make sure that the board can't touch the metal casing in any way. Mine came with a plastic sheet on the underside, but yours may not. Step four, mount the driver board power supply on the inside of the case and wire it up to the driver board. Don't power it up yet. Step five, making sure you have nothing connected to the mains. Cut and strip a three pin power cable to size and solder the live, neutral and ground to the corresponding cables to the original power socket. If you don't have a cable stripper, you can use a pair of scissors if you have a little bit of patience and a steady hand. If you can't wire a plug or confidently solder, maybe skip this part and just have the cables root out the RAM door on the back. You may have to cut the ground cable loose as it's attached to the iMac case. Use a multimeter on the continuity setting to be double sure of the polarity of the cables. The ground is the top, the neutral is the left, and the live is the right. Step six, once you've soldered the cables together, rewrap the joints with electrical tape and make sure they're safe and can't become exposed. Step seven, disconnect the remote control board and cable from the driver board, being careful not to damage it. Mount the remote control board wherever you like on the outside of the case. I mounted mine on the center back with Velcro so that I can easily access it, but have it still be hidden. You need to find a way to route the cable back into the case to connect it back up to the driver board. So make sure you have enough reach on the cable. Depending on where you mount it, you could drill a hole in the case or you could just use the RAM door. I foolishly used an older case so my case and ram door will look different to yours step eight making sure you have nothing connected to the main still you can now wire up the original power button i cut and stripped the third and fourth cable from the remote control board end of the cable i then joined them to the two cables that i stripped from the original power button i don't believe the polarity here will make a difference all it needs to do is make a circuit but be warned your board could be different and if you get the wrong cable you could short circuit the board and have to replace the entire unit again making sure you have nothing connected to the mains 
Using a multimeter on the continuity setting, figure out what cable you need to cut. The power button for mine is the button closest to the cable. Yours could be different, I would test this before cutting anything. You can test what cables are the power button by connecting one of the ends of your multimeter to the top or bottom set of the solder joints and the other end of your multimeter to the pins under the cable connector on the same board. Once you hear a beep, you know which cables you need to cut. In my case, it was the third and fourth cable. If you don't think this is worth the risk, skip this part and just use the on and off switch on the control board. Still unconnected to the mains, wire up your new IO by connecting the extension cables to the driver board. To achieve 5K on this monitor, you need to use two DisplayPort cables at once. Make sure the driver board is plugged into the power adapter and wired up to the original power socket. Now we need to wire up the display. There are two cables to connect on the display, the data cable and the backlight cable. The data cable is simple and has a little wire lever to hold it in place. This cable is not reversible. The side with the most exposed golden pins needs to face the opposite direction to the display. The backlight cable is reversible, but will only work one way. One of the sides has been painted black. The backlight cable from the driver board has a side with longer golden exposed pins and three small circle shapes in the plastic below. These sides need to go together. From my experience, getting this the wrong way around won't damage your display or the cable. So if it doesn't work, try the other direction. Step 9. We need to apply the adhesive and mount the display. Before doing so, check that all the features of your display work correctly. Once you're happy and you have everything working, apply the adhesive and mount the display. Step 10. Connect the two DisplayPort cables to your USB-C adapter and make sure the display is on the dual DisplayPort input source. The last step is to mount and wire up whatever speaker solution you choose. I simply glued a Bluetooth speaker to the back of the iMac casing. The display sleeps and wakes exactly as you would expect an Apple cinema display to do so. There is a slightly smaller delay when waking from sleep, but it's only a second or two. The display looks incredible in 5K and looks acceptable in 4K, but I think any other resolution lower than that may look a little strange on this display. It doesn't seem to be able to scale resolutions very well, which is normal for higher resolution displays. The 4K looks good, but I wouldn't recommend buying this if you only plan to use it in 4K. Unlike the Apple Cinema displays, the backlight isn't controllable by OS X. It would be great if I could find a solution for this, but I don't think I will. But it's not that difficult to change the backlight brightness once you've learnt the menu system. But I do miss being able to change it with my keyboard. I found 75% is a great brightness for daytime and around 50% is a great brightness for nighttime. The backlight seems plenty bright enough and after a small amount of configuration in the settings, the colours are almost exactly the same. I can't compare how it looks scientifically, but to my eyes it looks the same. And I like that I can use this monitor with any future computer over HDMI or USB-C. And that I have an all-in-one solution for my Mac, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. I don't know much about HDR, but from what I can see it caused problems with colour and exposure all over the image. Perhaps I need to work out some of the settings, but for now I've just avoided using it. As for reliability, unlike an Apple cinema display, I have no idea when this display may malfunction. It's not something I would rely on for professional use, but for my bedroom, it's great. I guess if you're not really all that good or really all that into building custom machines, then this is not the display for you. The menus and controls are pretty limited and a ball ache to navigate, but it seems pretty standard for any UHD TV or computer monitor. It doesn't seem to be able to remember your settings once you've unplugged the display, and it doesn't remember your settings per input source, meaning if you want a different setting per input source, you have to manually change it each time. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this build went. It was a bit of an experiment really. There wasn't really all that much information online, so therefore I had to build my own to find out what it could and couldn't do. 
It seems like a near perfect solution for my display needs. It was a super fun build and I'm hoping this will be my display for the next 10 years or so. But can you build a better display for what this cost me? Yes, perhaps. But this is a one of a kind display that you physically can't purchase. So in my eyes, it was worth it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. And be sure to read the frequently asked questions and let me know if you've had any thoughts in the comments below.